Well, we've passed a, a rough part of the year called Thanksgiving. Today is a, a day that God says, I will always be with you. Today I'm needing him even more because Thanksgiving holidays are those days that we seem to eat things we're not supposed to eat. And uh, it, it kind of gives us a kick into the, the, the December where at our church we look at uh, Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas, which will start next week. And today we're going to talk about the power to cope with fear. We talk about all kinds of coping, but today to cope with fear. Now, why would I want to talk about fear? Watch TV. Why would I want to talk about fear? Listen to conversations. Why would I want to talk about fear? Uh, talk to people at church. They've got fear. That's some, that's some of the reasons people come at the holidays, because they've got fear. But it's also the hardest time of the year for people because of this. There's more suicides, there's more anxiety, there's more stress, there's more attempted suicides than any other time of the year starting at Thanksgiving and ending January 1st. That's on record. There's just stresses that goes on. And it should be a time of joy, a time of celebration, a time of singing, you know, all about the holidays. But for some reason, we've forgotten those things. It says in Isaiah 41, 13, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Folks, either the Bible's true or we're all being lied to. I believe that's true. I believe that Matthew, that Proverbs 29, 25 says, The fear of men will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. So in Matthew chapter 10, beginning in verse 28, it says this, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And yet, not one of them will fall to the ground outside your father's care. In other words, God knows about the sparrows. And even the very hair on your heads are numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others, God says, I will also acknowledge him before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Anyone who loves their father or their mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross, remember Jesus says, take up your cross and follow me, is not worthy of me. You and I need to understand, folks, that the power to cope with fear comes through only knowing Jesus Christ as my Savior. Putting Him first. When I put others first, my family first, I put other people first, it automatically produces fear because we are not to put anything before God. Now, there's 365. You ought to write this down if you're taking notes. 365 fear knots in the Bible. That's one for every day of the year. 365 fear knots. You think maybe God knew we were going to need to be reminded not to fear, but to put our hope in Him. Fear introdu was introduced in Genesis chapter 3, verse 10, when the word, I was afraid, was used. Because remember, God said to, to uh, Adam, Adam, where are you? And he said, I was afraid. He was afraid because he had sinned. And folks, when sin comes into our life and we practice and live by sin, that's when fear comes in. The key verse today is this, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of people. They can kill you, but they cannot harm your soul. Instead, you should fear God 
who can destroy both body and soul in hell, Matthew 10, 28. So to conquer our fear, God gives us basically four things we've got to do. Number one is we've got to fear God. We've got to fear God, Matthew 10, 28. Now, fearing God means we have an awesome appreciation of Him. An awesome appreciation of Him. In other words, He is uno. He's number one in our life. A healthy kind of fear is taking God serious. If God says that I believe it, that settles it. That's serious. That God is all things. God is all places. He's always there with us. All we have to do is, He says, fear not. I am with you. See, God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. To fear God means to place God up higher, place God up higher than anyone else or anything else. What are you doing? What's more important? Is God number one? If he's number one in your life, the word fear is not part of your vocabulary. If he's not number one, you only turn to him when you have fear, you have an issue. Number two, the second way to conquer our fear, God says to confess him in Matthew 10, 32 and 33. We can receive, we can receive Christ alone, but we can't keep him there. You know, I, I come to him because he is my God and my father and my forgiver. He's the one who forgives me of my sins. But folks, we cannot keep Christ alone. We can't just keep him We've got to confess him. We've got to let people see Christ through us. With confession comes action. Because confession is an action verb. And as I confess him, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Folks, that's action. And that can only come through my lips and through the actions of my body and my mind and, my and what's going on. See, so with confession comes action. I think the Lord is telling us to just trust him. The Lord is the life changer. See, playing Christian is over if you want to fear not. Playing Christian with, like it's a game that I'm a Christian on Sunday. I bring my Bible to church. I wear my crosses. I put a cross on the mirror in my car, rearview mirror, so that people see it. They think I'm a Christian. Or I put it there because I think that's protecting me. Well, let me tell you something. The, other, the bad guy by, drives cars too. And he's not putting a cross around his, his rearview mirror. So a, a cross is wonderful, but we've got to put our fear in God. Because just because I carry a cross, that doesn't mean the devil doesn't have uh, demons. They're, they're not afraid of that cross. So you and I have got to make our confession that we believe that Jesus is the Christ and the living God. Number three, the third way to conquer our fears, God says, is in verse 37. Jesus uses a shocking contrast when he says to love me. He says, compared to me, everything else must be left out, must diminish, must be left out. He is either Lord of all or not Lord at all. See, what's taking number one in my life right now? We have our families together. They've traveled 600 miles to be here with us, my, my son and and, and my daughter-in-law, my grandkids, and my son who lives here, we met, had yesterday and had a wonderful meal together, watched them football all afternoon, three, three games of football. By the third one, we were ready to turn it off and do something else. But you know what? Families are wonderful, and it's nice for us to get together. But there's more to Thanksgiving than just eating food, and hopefully you found that. He says, love me. Love me. He says, he is either going to be Lord of everything in my life or he's not going to be Lord at all. My family means all the world to me, but not what Jesus does. Number four, fourth way to conquer our fears is God says, take up your cross and follow me, verse 28 of Matthew chapter 10. Christ calls us to commitment. And the word commitment means this, I have decided to follow Jesus. Folks, if I'm not committed, I'm not going to stick to it. I can say I love something all day, but, but when I say I'm committed to it, that means I'm glued to it. That means it's part of me. But when I stop being committed, everything else seems to fall apart. So if I'm committed to him, if I've taken up my cross and follow him, I don't seem to be afraid. I don't seem to have fear. 
I just say the Lord's in control. Everything's going to be all right. Man can take my body. I can die, but only the Lord can take my soul. And my soul is what lives for eternity, not my body. It returns to the dust of the earth, folks. He doesn't give out, listen to this, he doesn't give out polished, stylish crosses. He points us away from the styrofoam. He points us away from things that are easily destroyed, like wooden crosses and silver crosses and golden crosses. He gives us the rugged, the solid beam of burden to bear when he says, take up your cross. Folks, when I became a Christian, I didn't, I didn't become uh, someone who's afraid. I became a, someone who was empowered by God. And when I have fear and fear surfaces, I always say, with God's help, I can do all things. So with God, I am a more than a conqueror. And that's what he's saying where he says, take up your cross. Don't take up my cross. You take up your cross and you follow him. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. God did not give us the spirit of fear. He gave us the spirit of power. He gave us the spirit of love. He gave us the spirit of self-discipline. Now, why does God use such troublesome process to help us overcome fear? Why? Why does he say in 2 Timothy 1.7 that he doesn't give us a spirit of fear? Because he wants us to be reminded that spirit of fear is in this world because this world is not my home. The spirit of fear is here because that's what the devil uses to con confuse you and cause you to follow the wrong cross, not the cross of Christ. See, simply put, struggling gives us power. It gives us inner strength to face our, our quests that are before us. When I wake up in the morning, I wake up and put my feet on the ground and I say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, Lord, that I can be pointed towards you. Thank you, Lord, that I have the promises of fear nots, that when fear tries to come to me, and it does in some way, I can say, thank you, Lord, that I should not fear not, that I should be thankful. So simply put, struggling gives us the power and inner strength to face other quests in our way. What are you facing today? What's going through your mind? Maybe you have, you've had a death this year. Maybe you've lost a child. Maybe you've lost a loved one, a spouse. Maybe you've lost a, your, a, the pastor at your church that you loved for so many years and he's now with the Lord. Or maybe he's moved to another church. Folks, life goes on. And we should not have our fears built up in man or women. We should have our fears built up in God because he says, fear not. The devil says, I'm here, and I'm going to do everything I can to cause you to have confusion. John 10, 10 says that he's come to destroy and to kill. He wants you to fear, because fear is what makes you weak. If you're in war, you depend on the people around you to support you, in front of you, beside you, behind you. And you're the same way for them. They can't have fear because fear and war kills them. And you and I need to understand we are in war. And that's a war against the powers and principalities of this world. God says in Isaiah 12 2, Behold, God is my salvation. That's where my hope is. I will trust. I will trust and not be afraid. When fear comes, I've got to say, I trust in the Lord at this time. I don't trust in this fear I trust in the Lord and the Lord has given me just what I need because today I need not to fear but to trust. I need to trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding but in all my ways acknowledge him and he will make my pathway straight. Fear messes me up. Fear is confusing. He says, For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and a song. He also is become my salvation. Isaiah 12, 2. Remember who is in control. It's not you. It's not me. It's not our parents. It's not your pastor. It's the Lord. Remember who is in control. And sometimes you may need to say, Lord, I need you. And other times say, Lord, I am with you. I walk with you and I talk with you no matter what happens. Sometimes I go to the garden alone to pray. 
Sometimes I, I look at the cross of Christ and I realize that the cross of Christ reminds me that he hung on that old rugged cross to die for you and for me. See, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, no fear. All I need is to know that when I come to Jesus Christ and I say, I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son, the living God, he hears it. He welcomes me by faith. That's where my faith begins, believing in that which can only save me, which is Jesus Christ. And then I'm obedient in Christian baptism. There's where I die, where my body goes under the water and I come out, I rise to walk in newness of life. That's when I am covered with the blood of Christ. See, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Christ. I'm saved through the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ. And because Jesus shed his blood on Calvary and upon that cross, I have forgiveness of sin and I have no fear. Fear has no blood. You that have the blood of Christ have no fear because the blood of Christ upon you and upon me gives me this power that comes through him. Folks, it's real simple. 2 Timothy 1.7, God did not give us the spirit of fear. That's of the world. That's not from God. He gave us a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline to be able to overcome, to be able to overcome. For I, the Lord, your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13. He is there for me. Folks, fear causes a person to become disturbed within their heart and within their mind. They lose their peace when I have fear. Fear causes a person to lose the sense of commitment. Fear causes a person to be sidetracked, the loss of mission and meaning and purpose. Don't fear, fear God. Because when you're fearing God, everything seems to be all right. I have a question for you. If you have fear, you need to ask, why? Well, the way to start is this. I believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and I take him as my Lord and Savior. He is there. Nobody can take that from me. Nobody the Lord gave it to me, and the Lord will not let anybody have it. I'm the only one that turns it away. I'm the only one that has fear, and I shouldn't have fear when I have him. What can wash away your sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. If you're listening to us, I want to ask you this. If you died today, would you go to be with the Lord? Are you afraid of death? Hmm. Are you afraid of funerals? Hmm. Are you afraid of hospitals? Hmm. Are you afraid of man? Are you afraid of, of people? Are you? Hmm. Hmm. I'm just wondering why. <laughs> None of those things can save me. If you have Jesus, you got it all. Come to Jesus. As we approach Christmas where we remember the birth of Christ, we must also remember the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. It started at a manger, but it ended at the tomb. And when the tomb was empty, it began because he's our Savior. How about you? Father, we look to you for our strength today. You tell us 352 times, fear not. Help us to claim that promise and help us to hold on to that promise because when you're for us, nobody can be against us. And we pray these in the name of Jesus. It's the one who saves us. And no one can be saved except through, the Jesus, through Jesus Christ because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And the Bible says no one goes to the Father except through him in John 6, 14. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.